Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and break them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some revealing articles. First up, JP Morgan is telling its private wealth clients that Bitcoin is a great diversifier. So we're gonna take a look at uh, what they've been saying to their special clients in private and what they've been saying in public. On top of that, I just wanna do a real quick overview of uh, what uh, our friends over there at the Alex Masioli channel at Trade the Chain we're talking about yesterday, and it has to do with F2 Pool, Jerome Powell's comments, and uh, Ryan pretty much getting all out of uh, cryptocurrency. So interesting things, we'll take a look at those, but first take a look at what's going on the market. So uh, first up, as you notice, uh, there is no pool in the background. We are in Houston uh, doing some uh, some work on the, our new investment property. So if you hear some things going on in the background, just construction work, uh, no big deal. But uh, these are the things that we have to get through uh, because, hey, life goes on, business goes on. You just got to keep pushing through. All right. So here's what we got for today. For First of all, today is uh, March 6th, it's Saturday. It's uh, high noon, Houston, Texas time. And uh, here's what we have. So let me, first of all, let me blow this up so you can see what the heck I'm talking about. So we've got Bitcoin doing okay, uh, but still well below that 50,000 mark. That's uh, what I think is like a mental barrier is that now at 48.3, it's a little bit of a, of a gain, but not by much. It says 1%, but I could have sworn we were at 49.2 yesterday, but uh, maybe I'm incorrect. Correct, check me in the comment section. Uh, Ethereum is up uh, 9% in the last uh, 24 hours. And uh, we're looking at 1,600. Tether's tether, nobody cares. But interesting enough, uh, Cardano has fallen into that number four spot. And it's very odd because there's been nothing but great news. And again, like I always say, has anything changed? Has there, have, the, have the fundamentals uh, corrupted? Has there been some huge hack? Has somebody come out and said, surprise, blockchain is uh, created by uh, Hugo Chavez or something? No. It's, it's all the same. And actually, uh, we're doing, I mean, the crypto market is doing pretty good things in the background. The Binance coin, Polkadot, everything's uh, up a little bit except for Cardano. No, again, no good reason why, but that is what it is. Uh, so pretty good day if you're dollar cost averaging to buy more. I did myself. Uh, Doge, looking at, look out, 3%, nice. Ave up 3%, 2%, anything down? That's uh, in the last 24, well, Monero and Iota, but that's not so big. Uh, three percent, percent. So yeah, same old stuff. Same old stuff. Let's uh, take a look at the sentiment range. See what's going to be within that ninety uh, percent. Holy smokes! What is this? Digital note. I have no idea what this is. Uh, this is, of course, trade the chain sentiment analysis. Does a lot of scraping of the web. Uh, one of four uh, integration into Twitter. So digital note might might want to look at. There's no way. Uh, plus forty six percent. All right. Loop ring plus 6%. And just so you know, these three numbers here, this is what it will vary in between uh, its dates. But that middle number uh, in the next hour, they're 90% accurate with that. So if you want to look at that, it's a link in the description. Let's just jump into today's top story, shall we? All right. So this guy right here, this is interesting. It's interesting because, you know, JP Morgan for the longest time, remember Jamie Dimon, uh, CEO of JP Morgan, told all of his traders and all the people they work with, he goes, if I catch you uh, trading Bitcoin, I will fire you on the spot. And of course, you're like, well, you know, maybe it's just a real hard ass and just that's how he is. But <laughs> behind the scenes, uh, a little bit different. So, and as time has gone on, this when this happened, this was in 2018, 2019, somewhere around there. But behind the scenes, uh, they were telling their clients a little bit something different. Maybe they were buying a little bit in the background. Now, they are a publicly traded company, so you have to watch out these types of things. But uh, I never believed that JP Morgan was like, nope, this is not going to happen. It's not going to work. If it makes money, it makes sense. And I think that is what they will always look into, and especially cryptocurrency digital assets. So what do we have here? So JP Morgan, of course, telling his clients, hey, you should put, you should buy some Bitcoin and crypto. Well, what do they got? JP Morgan Private Bank has distributed an educational deck to clients to help them understand the basics, risks, and potentials of Bitcoin and crypto. Great. So to their clients, whichever uh, they want to uh, distinguish them as far as like value or whatnot, they said, hey, uh, here are some slides. Here's a slide deck. This is what we want you to take a look at. This is what we think is going to be pretty big as far as diversification. The deck was prepared in February and distributed last week in Europe and Asia as Bitcoin's price rally has drawn attention from financial institutions and investors. And this is one of those things where I always was, it didn't make sense to me uh, for, for a little bit. And it was actually Mike Novogratz who 
who, uh, who had a pretty good statement. He said, look, if you're into some type of asset and you're trying to get it at, you know, when it's really cheap, that's great, but it's very risky to do those things. because you never know what it's going to do as far as like go up or down. He goes, but when it starts to really start to, you know, rise up and, and he, he says Bitcoin specifically, he talked about it in March. He goes, you know, it's going to go up. You just don't know when it's going to go up. He goes, so when people start to see it really take off uh, after, you know, uh, weeks and months and it's have to really start to, to roll up, he goes, it's not as risky as when it was down in the 5,000, 4,000 range when it dropped like, you know, 70, 60, eh, I think it was like 40 or 50%. And I was like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I mean, you're not going to get the gains, but it's not as much risk because everybody's going to pile in. And if, if you look at the mentality of FOMO, uh, there was a survey that was just done, actually. And a lot of people that are getting into crypto right now, they have no idea what crypto is, like no idea. But they know it's going up and they want to buy that. So um, if you just look at that herd mentality, then sometimes it's, it's pretty good just to ride that wave and then get out uh, before the whole wave crashes. But again, this is not financial advice, just uh, entertainment purposes only. Anyhow, so this was given to their financial institutions and investors. And this was this part was interesting. It says, uh, under the so-called Metcalf's Law, I really didn't know much about Metcalf's Law instead of, uh, until Pat Ackerman came along. Pat, thanks so much. And uh, he was talking about Celsius and Voyager and and how you know the more users you have uh, and, the, and the, the better utility the network effects and the more of course the value of the token will rise so metcalf's law they actually uh, reference it here in this slide deck slide deck and uh, they say the value of a network is proportional to the square of the number of users so if you want to take a look at that as far as bitcoin just like take a look at all the wallets and then just uh, multiply it by that so bitcoin's per coin valuation just looking at wallets, uh, would be about 21,667. Not bad, right? It's double that right now. But they state if comparing the current global value of gold to Bitcoin using the 21 million max supply of Bitcoin, then Bitcoin's valuation would be uh, half a million dollars or 540,000. And finally, if applying the global value of money supply, the max supply of Bitcoin, its value would be 1.9 million per Bitcoin. So that's pretty great. So Again, take these numbers with a grain of salt. Don't think that Bitcoin's gonna go to half a million tomorrow, it's not. Don't think it's going to two million tomorrow, <laughs> it's not. Uh, it's a slower game than that. Um, and a lot, a, lot of, a lot of pretty smart people think it's going to a million. Uh, Jesse Powell over there, the CEO of Kraken says it's going to a million and, and beyond. But uh, I've heard that same song and dance when I got in 2017 and I do not believe it uh, right now. I think it can go to 150,000 uh, this current bull run, maybe the next one, uh, it could go up much higher than that. But I am reluctant uh, to go beyond those conservative numbers because that's just to who I am. And, and you know what? I'll tell you this. Between me and you, uh, I'd be very happy if I'm wrong. But, I mean, if it goes to 300,000, I'm like, hey, I was wrong. Fantastic. All right. To finish this article up, it says uh, Bitcoin is diversifying, but it's not a protection asset. Uh, sure, I guess so. And it says uh, Bitcoin is not gold nor do we think of it as such. I don't think of it as gold either. I think of it as gold 2.0 uh, because it's a great store of value. You can move it to anyone, anywhere in the world uh, within 30 minutes or less. Uh, it's, uh, it retains its value. It used to cost a nickel, now it's cost $50,000 or so. And that's why I heavily invested into it. So uh, as far as like, like, like gold retainments and then moving things, I can see that. Uh, when it comes to portfolio construction, it has diversifying properties like gold. Yes, it does. But its volatility characteristics and correlation profile refute the comparison to the traditional safe haven asset. And I will say this, and that's pretty much it. It goes through some more stuff, but I almost fell asleep reading it. Um, I will say this. All these things that it, it talks about and, you know, about, uh, well, it's not really gold. It's not, really, it's not, it's not gold. It, it's not. It's not. It's not as stable uh, as, as gold is. But we got to remember that uh, gold goes up and gold goes down. Bitcoin goes up and down as well. It just goes up and down a heck of a lot more. So it'll still retain the value, but the fluctuation, the volatility is going to be pretty great uh, because we are in price discovery mode. Once we kind of hit this equilibrium, remember there's only 21 million and it's being gobbled up by uh, some big players. But once we hit it, I think it's going to stay that like that for a long time. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. Just interesting to note that, uh, you know, JP Morgan is finally coming around. They were the biggest critics. Now we could just get uh, Dr. Doom Rubini to get in our side. 
then I know we've got a heck of a bull run. All right, let's move on to our next piece. So next up, uh, the gentleman over there at uh, at the Alex Mascioli channel, Trade the, Cha Trade the Chain, they had some really good uh, segments, uh, and yesterday was just straight fire. So Ryan, he's in the, uh, let me blow this up so you can see it. He's in the bottom left-hand corner right there. Ryan there just sold all of his cryptocurrency, and he's a big crypto believer, and he said he only owns Doge. <laughs> I think he just, he's just holding on to it for, you know, because he thinks it's going to be the moonshot. And uh, he's not, he doesn't really think it, but I think he's like, well, who knows what could happen. And he had, he makes some pretty good points. But what they were talking about yesterday was pretty good. CJ up there in the top right, uh, he was saying a couple of great things. First, he was talking about uh, F2 pool, because everybody's been talking about F2 pool and, and how they're dumping Bitcoin. He goes, it's ridiculous. He goes, not that it's ridiculous that they're dumping. He goes, but you have to understand, he goes, what's in global circulation? compared to what is going on with how much they are dumping, it is infinitesimal. It doesn't really matter so much. He goes, so when they dump some things, he goes, don't think it's like the end all be all. And that's the reason why things dump. And he made a couple of good points, but I think it's like this. Uh, first of all, I think CJ's a right smart guy. But uh, I think that smart money will look at what's going on and go, oh, you think that uh, that's, that F2 pool is, is, is causing the, uh, the uh, big dump and you're going to blame it on them? Well, cool. What I'll do is I'll just go right behind them and I'll dump my Bitcoin and I'll just, uh, you know, I'll sell it. And then I'll wait for everything, every, all the uh, retail investors to freak the heck out and watch it just go down. And then I'll buy back in, let it raise up. And then F2 pull dumps again and I'll piggyback on them. And then... He gives a great uh, a great point about uh, the uh, stock market crash in 1929, where there was a gentleman, I forgot his name, he shorted <laughs> during that time and made like millions and hundreds of millions of dollars when millions of dollars was like millions of dollars back in the day. And uh, he said, you know, it wasn't him that did that. He goes, it was the panic and it was the fear and people, you know, bum rushing uh, in, 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 into the banks and, and believing that there was going to be a run in the banks. And there was. He goes, so it's just a uh, a mentality. So. They talked about that. I thought it was pretty interesting, you know, how they uh, go uh, or how it came to that conclusion because F2 pool, everybody talks about it. I don't think it's the end all be all. And again, I don't think anything's really changed. Fundamentals are still the same. Talked about that. Jerome Powell's comments, uh, the Fed chairman, where he comes out and he said something interesting. He goes, you know, because Jerome Powell came out and said, hey, uh, we're not going to, you know, change uh, anything. Uh, essentially, we're not going to, um, uh, raise the rates, but people were expecting them to lower the rates. And just because of them not helping the market, the market took a big tumble. And I'm like, well, how weak is that, that you need this guy to come out and go, hey, we're going to drop the rate so much to help you all out and, and buy everything back. I'm like, what a weak market. What a weak bunch of people to just say, oh, well, you know, we're not going to get this, 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 this huge help from the government. It's amazing to me that everybody complains about the government until the government doesn't come through for them. Like, oh, damn government, da, da, da. If you need the government to prop up your paper mache market, then uh, what is it all about anyhow? So uh, there was that piece, and I thought it was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty interesting. And then uh, uh, Ryan here uh, made some, in the bottom left-hand corner, made some pretty great comments about Michael Saylor. <laughs> and he says, he goes, look, and this is, this is my opinion too. Uh, people always tell me, Rob, you'll understand. Mark is different. All these institutions in there. Michael Saylor will never sell. Uh, uh, Elon Musk will never sell. All these places will never sell. Well, first of all, I, I believe Grayscale will never sell because they will never sell the Bitcoin because it's in their their charter. They can't sell it, right? Um, and Michael Saylor can do whatever he wants to because he owns the majority of the shares. But when you have these big institutions where they have shareholders, you better believe if Bitcoin takes a dump to like 40, 50% and that tanks the stock price, people are like, hey, uh, you work for us, pal. So you better start selling uh, some of that Bitcoin that you picked up, which is now becoming worthless. We don't understand it anyhow. And we were just going along for the ride. So sell it. I think institution will still sell. And this is the same thing that me and Alex, who is laughing his head off here in the top left-hand corner, uh, we believe it. But Ryan here talks about how he goes, look, he goes, Michael Saylor, he goes, and he made some pretty damning, uh, and they they were true comments about him. And I'm just going to link this video at the end. Talks about Michael Saylor and and uh, the kind of budget that he has for um, 
for his safety and or his his security budget, how he kind of spends a little bit frivolous, frivolously, how he made a hundred million dollar pledge for a uh, uh, a global college uh, that would uh, you know teach everybody everything that just kind of went to the wayside, and he talks about how his company is really just a data scraping company for Facebook. These are Ryan's comments. They were pretty pretty good. So uh, and and he so he talks about that and then. He, he made a good point about the stocks, <laughs> the stock of MicroStrategy going down. It was pretty, and, and it was right. He's right. So if we take a look here at the MicroStrategy stock price, two things come about. Well, first of all, I mean, he had an all-time high here on February 9th of 1272. But look back here. It was like 150, 140. Once around, somewhere around here where they started to, December 18th. No, I think it was back here in August when they started to buy up. Yeah, when they started to buy up uh, uh, Bitcoin, then started to go up here. And then as they bought more and more, then all of a sudden it really just took off. Did it have, any, did it have anything to do with the company making a new acquisition or them, you know, getting uh, some kind of new huge contract or something? It really wasn't. I don't think so. I could be wrong checking the comments, but it really all became down to Bitcoin. And uh, that's when the price went to the roof. Now look what's happening. And then Ryan even talked about it. He goes, look, he goes, every time Michael, Michael Saylor would buy Bitcoin, the price would shoot up. He goes, but just a couple of days ago, he bought more Bitcoin, a good amount, didn't move the price whatsoever. He goes, so what do you think is going to happen later on? One thing to consider. And then if you really want to, I'm going to take a, a line from Diddy. When in doubt, zoom out. So let's take a look at the one year. And you're gonna see here, let's take a look at five years. I didn't look. So I guess in five years, it was doing pretty well at 187. Then it dropped down 2018. And it's been trading pretty sideways in the traditional market around 130, 125. And then of course, uh, go from 125 up to 12, geez, 1200. And now to be currently at 620, but still from 120, to 620, uh, really, what are you, you know, 5x there, somewhere around there, about five, five to six x, five and a half x. That's still pretty good, uh, considering, you know, the company didn't do anything re remarkably different, and uh, that's what it is. But go ahead and check out that video. I'll link at the very end. It's uh, and Ryan's got a pretty good thesis about why things are going to go down and crash, and that's why he sold all his crypto. Me personally, I'm hoping Ryan's right. I'm, I'm praying that he's right. Because guess what? If it does crash, I don't think it's going to last that long. I think it'll be pretty steep because people will panic and flip the F out and they will sell like crazy. And if you sell, I will say I will tip my hat to you. I will say thank you so much. And I will buy the crypto that you have sold and given to me at a very market reduced price. So thank you if you do that. That's it. All right. So, hey, thanks for sticking with me through the, through the whole video. If you liked the video and you found some knowledge into it, uh, give it a thumbs up. It really always helps. Also, if you uh, like these types of videos, go ahead and subscribe. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And uh, that is it for today. So thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next